Right. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm going to talk today about divine health um, as against divine healing. And just to give you an idea of where I'm going, if you think about how the 10 lepers came to Jesus and only one came back, to say thank you. And so what Jesus said, he said, weren't the 10 cleansed? So he used the word cleansed, but where are the other nine? Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you whole. So if you can see that there is a healing and a wholeness, all 10 were healed. But why, why was this one now whole and not just healed? And I believe it's because true healing is spirit, soul and body. So his spirit was affected by his healing. It was an all-round job, if you like. <laughs> and so the Lord called it whole. He called it wholeness. So first of all, what is total health or wholeness? And I suppose if you ask the man in the street, they would probably say it's an absence of sickness. They'd probably say that total health meant, you know, that you had no emotional needs, no mental issues, your body was fine. So, yeah, but they probably wouldn't bring into it the spiritual aspect um, because I believe that total health isn't just the absence of those things, but a wonderful, positive, glorious um, sense of harmony between spirit and soul and body. So we're going to look at a few scriptures, but the first one we're going to look at is 1 Thessalonians and chapter 5, and verses 23 and 24. And I love this scripture. It's one I use quite a lot. It says, may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through. Now, I believe that through and through means beginning in your spirit, going through into your soul and through then into your body. Your soul is one of the biggest blocks to the truth that your spirit knows getting to your body. But he says here, um, may he sanctify you through and through. And may your spirit, soul and body be preserved sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who's calling you and utterly trustworthy, and he will also do it. <laughs> he will do it. He will sanctify you through and through your spirit, your soul, and your body. Um, well, we all know that we're three parts um, because we're made in God's image. And God is 
three parts, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And as we talk about this, we, I believe that when these three are working together in harmony, we're going to look into it more, there is something happening in your body um, that of peace that leads to to health and where there is dis-ease it leads to disease dis-ease leads to disease so the whole process somehow of sanctification is seeing the alignment of these things and I want to talk to you about the things that that stop it now total health isn't the same as perfect health um I just want to make that sure because um Paul said our outward man is dying but our inward man is being renewed every day and that's why a strong spirit keeps you young. Because your inward man is being renewed. Have you ever thought about that? Every day, today, your inner spirit, your spirit man is being renewed. It's not aging in a, in a bad way. It's maturing probably but it's eternal and being renewed. So we've got some interesting things to look at. Um, that, that scripture about the inward man is, um, is 2 Corinthians 4.16. If anyone's wanting to go over any notes, they might uh, make. And so I, I did say that, that, like divine health isn't the same as like total total healing um but i believe that every person here you you think about yourself should expect to live their allotted time by god in good enough health to fulfill what's written on your scroll and um, your life purpose. Every one of you has got a life purpose by God. And I believe it's really, really important that we fulfill our life purpose. Now, there's been a, a link right from the beginning between obedience and health. So there was no sickness before the fall. None. And if we look at a couple of scriptures here, I'm wanting to, to show you some laws, divine laws that that run this whole thing. And so, if we look at Exodus 15 and 26, and this says, if so there is a condition. It's not unconditional. So what wasn't unconditional? If you go back one verse. It says, Moses cried to the Lord, the Lord showed him a tree. 
And whenever you see tree, you think cross, which he cast into the water, and the waters were made sweet. And so when the cross came into the waters of the nations, it, it brought a healing. But he said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do what's right, listen to and obey his commandments, keep these statutes, then I will put none. I don't know if you want to underline none in your Bible. I will put none of the diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians. And here he titles himself, I am the Lord who heals you. But can you see the condition? He's not just said the cross has gone in so everybody's healed. He speaks of a condition and having Having said that, I, I just want to say, of course, we have things like genetic weaknesses, accidents, traumas. We have things that happen in our life. We even have things like unwise lifestyles. You know, like <clears throat> most of the drug addicts we dealt with in Spain, most of them had hepatitis um, and needed healing. Some of them had AIDS and needed healing. And, you know, as they began to walk in the Lord's ways, they began to get healed. So we're going to look at these three areas, spirit, soul, and body. Just hang on one second. We now and finish that straight to just check there. There's a heater in there. Okay. Ryan Flora. Okay. Roy, my husband Roy is just going out, so it's just saying goodbye. Right. So we're going to look at spirit, soul, and body, and try, if we can, to um, try and nail things. Um, I'm wanting to get down down it, it might take a few sessions this but our life is affected by five main factors what we think what we say what we do what we eat and what we inherit. So we're going to look at these factors in a minute. But we'll look at a couple of two or three scriptures to define more accurately spirit, soul and body, which we're seeking to get to work in harmony. So we'll look at Romans. First of all, this is for your spirit. Romans chapter 10. And these are interesting, interesting things. Verses, um, we'll start at verse 9. Um, I'm just wondering if I've got this right scripture here, but this is again how your spirit becomes alive. If you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Christ is Lord, and in your heart you believe that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. Now, up to that point, you were alive. You were breathing. Up till, up till that point, you were, if you want to say, you were functioning, but your spirit wasn't alive. You weren't able to relate to God in the way he wants because your body's given to you to, to relate to the earth. Your soul is the real you, your character and personality and gifting, but your spirit is given to you to relate to God and spiritual things. So we need to, this is what we need to do in verse nine. And this is talking about bringing the whole person. We're going to talk about that, but verse 10, with the heart, a person believes. And then with your lips, you confess it. So that spirit, soul and body, your bodies, you're using your lips to confess. You're using your heart to believe and your spirit is made alive. How wonderful is that um so we'll just leave we'll just leave that one there but the soul um you can just listen if you want it's only one verse james 1 verse 21 um so get rid of all uncleanness and wickedness and in a humble way in a humble, gentle and modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which was implanted and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your soul. And so we talk about the soul is, the soul is, um, as I say, in the middle. It's where your blocks come. It's where your bad attitudes come. It's where um, all the, a lot of our problems come from the soul. But in the heart, as we believe the word of God and that gets en engrafted into us by the spirit, we begin to align with God and you know Jesus was never sick he wasn't sick because he never disobeyed so he never had dis-ease of course he knew pain through what we did to him but my word we're so blessed to have a biblical belief system as we read the word we get a biblical belief system in our souls and then just look very briefly at that the body, Galatians 6 and 8, it says that if you sow to the flesh, if you, if you allow the flesh, if you give it um, headroom, if you sow to the flesh, you probably think you're getting away with it. But actually... Sin will always cost you more than you think. And we'll look more at that. Because every time we take communion, 
the Lord wants us to be able to draw from the merits of the cross for healing and for many other things, for healing of spirit, soul, and body. But he says, examine yourself. Because for this cause, many, many are weak and sickly. And that's despite the price having been paid at the cross. But when you examine yourself, you see if you're keeping the terms of the covenant. The covenant of healing. There's a covenant of healing. And you see. You look and you, you renew your covenant by making sure that you're keeping the terms, which are faith, largely, and obedience. So, as I say, we're going, there are these five factors, I believe, that affect our health. The health of the world, really, I've named them, but I'll just go over them again. What we think, what we say, what we do, what we eat, and what we inherit. And we're going to go over all these things, but we'll begin with think. Now, I, if you're like me, <clears throat> I always used to imagine that we just think with our brains. <laughs> if anyone says, what do you use to think? You say, well, I use my brain. <laughs> but the Bible doesn't say just that because it says that there are three different places we think from. Now that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> three different places we think from. Our heart, our brain, yes, and interestingly, from the Bible, our intestines. <laughs> did you know? <laughs> did you know your intestines think? <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> that's quite <laughs> quite a revelation, isn't it? But anyway, we have got some scriptures, but. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart. So you think in your heart as well. As a man thinks in his heart, that's Proverbs 23, 7. So <clears throat> it, it's, it's, it's from the heart, the Lord says, the mouth speaks. interesting that by the belief system sown inside us by the word of God that is how we speak so you get the spies in numbers which we haven't time to to open up but the story of the spies there they are looking at the promised land here we are, looking at the promises of God. But they looked at the wonders of that promised land. They looked at them in a, in, in an, what should we say, with different belief systems. So some looked at them with a faith belief system and said, yeah, let's go in. God's promised it us. We can take the land. It's been promised. And others looked at the land, thought it was wonderful, but said, hey, we can't, we can't do this. 
The giants are too big. Their belief system was in a different place to Joshua and Caleb. Their belief system about their God and the belief system about themselves. So where's your belief system? We have, that's what we, that's what we think about every time we take communion. We think about, Lord, am I in faith? Am I in obedience? And it's interesting, really interesting, that when you hear music and worship, it actually bypasses the brain and goes and becomes part of your heart belief system. That's why it's great, absolutely great to worship. And it's why the Bible says you've got to guard your heart because out of it proceed the issues of life. That includes health and everything. And the tongue is controlled by the heart. Just take that in. The tongue of those spies was controlled by their heart. Their heart belief system, but We'll go back to music because there's some, I'm, I'm a worshipper and uh, so um, I've put this down. If stressful thoughts drop from the mind to the heart, so you feel stressed about a situation. If that drops into your heart, it'll automatically become part of your belief system. And then you need to repent of that because that impairs your immune system, your body's resistance to sickness, germs, things like that. But Jesus, say he was never sick because he always had the right response to stresses. He never turned it into, where were you, God, or fancy that, or, um, or oh, we haven't got any money, or oh, this with my family member. It never turned into a heart stress that affected his body. So this is interesting statistic. You might or might not want to write it down, but the average life expectancy in the USA is 77 years, that's the average. The average life of a rock star is 37 years. Average life. Because what has gone in, in to their belief system has impaired their bodies. But you'd be interesting to know what the lifespan average is of a classical music conductor, 89. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> because they're, they're, they're just full of beauty. 
And you know what the Lord said to me when I was preparing this? <clears throat> Interesting, because this was only last night. And I think I'm a fairly upbeat person. But the Lord said, you don't think enough joyful thoughts. That made me think, how many joyful thoughts have you thought? Not just non-negative, but actually joyful. How many joyful thoughts have you had today up to now? How many joyful thoughts did you have yesterday? <clears throat> and because God highlighted that to me, I began to think that, you know, with this world getting so dark, it's so easy to have these, mm, oh, you know, what what's going to happen to the money, what's going to happen when the who gets in, what's going to happen, you know, when the because the church is in such a state. And then it's easy. And I decided last night that I'm going to develop a more joyful thought system. <laughs> and if anyone wants to decide that they'll do the same, you can maybe start with some of the joyful psalms or the joyful, I mean, David had some difficult times as well. But he also had these joy, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And joy, I realized, is uh, one of the gifts, a gift um, that God wants to give us. Uh, because he says the joy of the Lord is your want to be strong. I used to run a crusader class and one of our favorite things was <clears throat> if you want joy, then sing for it. If you want joy, shout for it, clap for it, dance for it. <clears throat> if you want joy, sing for it, sing for joy. Clap for joy. That's what, that's what. Football spectators do, and they haven't even read the Bible most of it. They clap for joy. A bag of air has gone in the net. <laughs> We've got a lot more to be joyful about. And so I, I'm saying that <clears throat> dissonant sounds like heavy metal and rock and all that, um they change your hormone pattern and and i watched i i still have them somewhere they played different types of music and spoke different words over water and then it then they turned it to ice and the ice was all horrible shapes when it was horrid music and beautiful shapes when it was. And when you think we're a lot of water, aren't we? So I'm saying what you think. So <clears throat> from the heart, the Bible says, proceed what I am now going to name as the four um, four or five main stresses of life. So, anger. Guilt. Lust. Bitterness. 
fear. Let's add envy. Maybe we can add greed as well. But this checks out in Matthew chapter 15. So Matthew chapter 15 and verses 19 and 20. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, such as murder, adultery, sexual vice, theft, false witnessing, slander, irreverent speech. These are what make a man unclean. So he's talking, it's all coming from the heart. But these, all these things I've mentioned, which we're going to go into one by one over the next few sessions, because I believe that <clears throat> divine health is going to be more needed with the way the national health service is so far behind I don't see how it's ever going to catch up but each of these negative attitudes directly affects um, the way our bodies work and that determines in the end whether we're healthy or whether we're sick. So we'll do one more and what we say. Interesting. Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Death and life. You call it one down health and sickness are in the power of the tongue. Wow. That's a very, very strong statement. Very strong. And it's like positive words create a sort of a, I'm going to call it, I don't know what else to call it, like you're flowing in like with with the divine energy because he's a he's a positive god but negative words my word have you ever considered that every word you speak is a seed it's an interesting thought Because with, with a seed, <clears throat> there's always a crop, a harvest, something more than what you've sown. So you, you just sow a little seed, you might not even think about it but you don't reap back a little seed. You reap back far more than a little seed, but we'll talk about that. So 1 Peter, you needn't turn to it, because but 1 Peter 3 verse 9 is a verse that I use um, quite a bit. 1 Peter 3 and verse 9 says never return evil for evil insult for insult scolding tongue lashing berating but on the contrary blessing blessing people 
praying for their welfare, for their happiness and loving them. For know that to this you have been called. This isn't just a verse in the scripture. You have been called to use your tongue to pronounce blessing and welfare and good things. And this is then the result of that. <clears throat> so that you yourselves inherit a blessing from God. By blessing others, you inherit a blessing from God. And then it says, so that you may obtain a blessing as heirs uh, that brings you welfare, happiness and protection. Isn't it amazing that that verse is, I've never heard anyone speak on that verse. And yet it's a wonderful verse. <laughs> so your words are sowing for your tomorrows. And if you if you just just think about this, it's just simple. But there's an, an antidote to a nettle sting. You're all thinking dock leaf, and that's why. It's an antidote to a snake bat. Yeah, so you get the anti-venom, antidote, whatever it is. But the poison of a curse, the antidote is blessing. So, yeah. So God actually says in Proverbs 3 verse 8, I'm giving you lots of scriptures because that's where the power is, not in my thoughts or my opinion, but the power is in what God says. And <clears throat> what it says there is, if you, if you speak positively, it will be health to our navel and marrow to the bones. So we're just particularly thinking now about divine health. We're thinking on what we say. So when, when you speak in prayer, how wonderful is that in terms of sowing? Because your whole being comes into harmony with God. When you're praying, somehow, <clears throat> somehow you, you're in a flow that is so health giving, so beautiful so pleasing to God and such a blessing for your body. And when you sing out your praises, <clears throat> God said to me years back, Satan's darts go easily off a praising Christian. They have a job to land. They can't get through the praise barrier. <laughs> and so every time you're praising God and using your mouth for praising God, you're batting off. You're batting off the attacks of the enemy because the Lord's inhabiting those praises. So Satan can't get to you. <laughs> Isn't that... Aren't these wonderful things? Apart from that, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So as you speak out the word, you build faith. 
your soul hears and its belief system comes into line with it. Are you finding this interesting? Because it's quite different. It's, it's, <laughs> it's quite different than than the normal and I've I've got pages of it because I did a a massive study on it some years back and the more I did the more I got thoughts mm. about mm. it interesting thoughts uh, that I hadn't mm. thought before so yeah there's there's an awful lot there and it, because it will take so long I, I've I've not wanted to um take too long but I'm just thinking because it's only 10 to I'll give you one more um way what we do this is a factor in your health <clears throat> what you do so there's most of you will know that there's a spiritual law in operation whether man knows it or not that is the law of cause and effect so there's no effect without a cause so when I was doing this study these years back, I learned that every time we do something wrong, sin, we store it in our limbic system. It's stored there. Now, <clears throat> I thought, oh, that's terrible. So uh, the more wrong you do, like, the more you're carrying in your limbic system and that affects your health. But <clears throat> obviously God made the antidote if we confess our sin. So what we're doing when we confess our sins and keep short accounts with God we are keeping a clean limbic system, which affects your health. Isn't that, <clears throat> isn't that wonderful? That's why he said, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, not just to forgive us, but to cleanse us. Yeah, I know he cleanses our spirit, but it's cleansing your limbic system as well. Because now you're not carrying guilt, you're carrying forgiveness. And that's a well being in yourself. And so, <clears throat> that we all know that scripture, I think it's 1 John 1 7, if we confess our sins. So, it's a really good habit to do to keep short accounts with God. I'll often begin my prayer time by these simple words. Is there anything between us, Lord? It's a really simple, because he doesn't want there to be anything between you, so he tells you. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> When people choose to cover their sins, and I want you to just think how it affected David. So he said, when I, when I didn't confess my sin. And so in Psalm 6 and verse 2, it tells you what happened. So Psalm 6. And verse 2, have mercy on me, Lord, and be gracious to me, for I am weak. And then my Amplified says, faint and withered away. 
Oh Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My inner self, as well as my body, is exceedingly disturbed and troubled. And we know from other Psalms, um, I think it's in the 30s somewhere, um it it it's it's this saying that while yes psalm 32 verse 3 when i kept silence before i confessed my bones wasted away that's psalm 32 and verse 3 So I'm I'm sharing thoughts with you to try to seek that you can follow every instruction of, of the Bible because God's the nearer <clears throat> we walk to that, then the more our bodies in peace, and peace is a wonderful wonderful environment for health and it's interesting we will go into that next time we all know about the ten commandments but you know that jesus gave 49 other little ones And those, those, so that's perfect number seven times seven, 49. And those, I've realized, <clears throat> are all to keep us healthy. It's all about forgiving. It's all about confessing. It's all about dealing with anger. It's all about dealing with lust. It's all about not getting bitter. His commandments are all to seek to keep us in health. They're not to put a heavy yoke on us. They're to bless us and bless us and bless us. And so... <clears throat> I've put this down about sowing and reaping what you do. Obviously, all we can do is give the principles. But you reap, the Bible's very strong, Galatians 6, 8. Don't be deceived because what a man sows, he will reap. But here's some just thoughts. We reap what we sow. We reap where we sow. We reap more than we sow. And we often reap in a different season than we sow. And so we don't always relate what's happening back to the seed that's been sown. So people who have a lifetime of immorality, they will, they will have a seriously impaired immune system, I believe. So God designed us in such a way um, and he's a wonderful designer he doesn't make mistakes that if we violate his command there will be a dis-ease of the soul and eventually that will lead to a disease of the body and so what we do is also sowing what we do is affecting our health like David, he didn't do. 
Uh, he didn't confess. He committed adultery. He, you know, you know the things that he did. And yet, in his grace, God still called him a man after his heart because he repented. So these, I'll tell you briefly about these 49 commands that Jesus gave. Interesting one day, if you read through the New Testament, you can look at these 49 commands. And interestingly enough, he didn't just give them. He commanded his disciples to share them. And so he said, teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. That's the end of Matthew 28, um, where he's commissioning the disciples. And he says, he said, through his teaching, that when we obey, we've, we, we're not just obedient, we're actually developing in ourselves qualities that um, make us more like Jesus. As we obey these commands, we get compassion, kindness, forgiveness, generosity. You know, God's such a generous God. He's not a bit stingy, is he? He said to Abraham, I'm your exceedingly great reward. He's a God of exceedingly, he's wonderful. And so I think what we'll do, we'll go into little groups to just talk about this, but I'd like you to bless one another. In, are we all right for that, Robert? Yes, Wendy, okay. Are we all right to go into, into yes. groups? Yes. And when you're ready. We'll just finish off. So when you go in your groups, then if you just, just talk slightly about this, about encouraging one another to have joyful thoughts, blessing one another, praying for one another if there are needs in your group. But we've got to not just hear this, we've got to put it into practice. And, um, and I believe that, as I say, divine health is better than divine healing. <laughs> Thank goodness. Brenda, Brenda, can I ask, you said that we think with our heart, our brain, and our intestines. Have you got yes. a scripture for the intestine? Well, I have, but I've not put it down here, and I can't remember it offhand, but I will I will look it up. The Bible talks about, um, it, it talks about, but it doesn't call intestines. I think it calls it bowels. Mm. Like Jesus was, was, um, moved with bowels with compassion and things like this there is mm. quite a few scriptures like that kim okay um, interesting uh, I yeah. to having that <laughs> yeah. yeah so we're going into groups for 15 minutes because i think it'll take that time to bless one another and pray for one another and and think and then we'll we'll be finished by half past but, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity to, to, to bless one another, a wonderful opportunity to glean things that, um, that will stand us in good stead when we are actually praying for the sick because they help you understand some of the roots of why they're sick yeah okay so we'll see you in 15 minutes thank you robert okay brenda
Hello?